So guys, I have a giant book haul that I will have to split up into two parts. Um, I tried filming yesterday and my phone decided it wanted to take a 40 minute video and chop it into like a like 15 minute video and a 25 minute video. So I did not want to refilm. So it's the next day, next night at like 11 o'clock. Um, so I'm going to split the first part into, um, romances and family sagas since those seem to be popular. Um, I went a little nuts. I'm not going to go into it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen, you know, mistakes were made. This is what happens when you, um, need a coping skill for something traumatic in life um that's not harmful <laughs> so my coping skill is buying books and i got bunches through um local used bookstore having a tent sale again so i went twice and i have various ones from little free libraries and another used bookstore last month it's just a hodgepodge like it's 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 more than 100 books, so I'm going to try not to be long-winded because I don't feel like wanting to have another snafu with my, my camera. And if you hear noises, um, I have five cats now, so two were added to my three. Um, again, if you follow me on Instagram, my mom passed away uh, a month ago, July the 2nd, and her two cats have come to live with us and they're all still a weekend trying to get along trying to to fit in and get in their groove and it's a bit much uh but this one she's probably gonna sit on my lap the whole time this one if she'll show is diva if you've been watching my channel since the beginning i highly doubt it um you've seen her before um, so yeah, she may sit here for a while. You may see some more cat action there in the hall, but, uh, yeah, she's, she's either 14 or 15. So she's our old lady. We think she's kind of blind, which is why she hisses at her brother that she's lived with for, you know, that long. <laughs> so bless her heart. Anyways, um, Bedtime. It's normal bedtime, so you're going to hear the chiming of the William. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, no order. N no particular order. And I'll show you um, step backs if there are step backs. Uh, most of them have bomb covers, so the step back is the cover. Uh, you know what I mean. The cover art is the step back. Uh, we have Not Storm by Catherine Coulter. This one is an old 80s, I do believe. Most of these are 80s, possibly some in the 90s. Oh, on the cusp, 1990. And this one is um, not technically pirate, um, but it does take place around a wealthish, wealthish, <laughs> shouldn't do this at 11 o'clock at night, a wealthy British sea captain. Um, and his name is Alec with a C, which I always liked, Alec with a C as a name. So we have that one. Uh, we have Memphis by Sarah Orwig. Uh, this one, pretty self-explanatory for a historical romance that takes place post-Civil War. Um, and I like that it has the, the steamboat. I didn't take the sticker off, but oh yeah, Kmart. <laughs> I did pretty well on the others on getting the stickers off. So this one, if you like that particular time period, we have that one. Uh, then we have The Moth by Catherine Cookson. I have another of hers, which I'll probably show in another video. I tried to dig through again and separate them the best I could. So probably the second video, you're going to see more romances and a hodgepodge. Um, but The Moth, this one is very like 70s, 80s, um, almost gothic looking. 86, um, and it takes place in the North Country Hills, um, so a 
British historical. Then we have, I'll just show you these three. I didn't get these with, I bought them I think in May because I read the first one, which was, I'm not sure if it's gonna tell me. Lord of the Nile, so it's an Egyptian historical quartet. These are not in order, um, but I read that one. It was it was okay, okay enough to go to thrift books and get the others. So we have Desert Prince, Sword of Rome, and Daughter of Egypt, which I think of the three. This one's the one I look forward to to reading the most, but it's um, loosely based, like family members. Then we have Vows by Laverle Spencer. I read Laverle Spencer at the end of high school. Um, early college. I mainly went for her historicals. I love the historicals that I read. I don't believe that I got to this one. Uh, if I did, it's going to be new to me because I will have forgotten it. Um, I don't intend on going and getting her contemporaries. That's not to say I won't change my mind, but these are the ones that I gravitate towards. Um, which, similar, I'll just go ahead and show you this one. Same thing. Wanderlust by Danielle Steele. Yes, you can laugh at me for Danielle Steele, but again, she was an author I read. I remember many a summer day plowing through one of her books in a day or two. I remember Thurston House swimming or like laying on a float in my friend's pool in the summertime reading it and just being engrossed. So Danielle Steele is one of those. I always have loved her historicals, not so much her contemporaries. And then we have... Uh, this one, I didn't tell you about this one. This one is uh, a Western, I do believe. Yes, Wyoming Territory, 1888. So that one's Western, and this is this is a good mix of different historicals. It's not one particular uh, setting. And this one was, um, it bounces. So from San Francisco to the Great Wall of China in the 30s, from North Africa to London during the Blitz. And then we have Winter Fire by Elizabeth Lowell. This one, I do believe, is post-Civil War moving westward. Yes, to the Utah Territory in winter of 1868. So again, another Western if you're interested. It does not have a step back. It's pretty boring. And then we have The Tea Planter's Bride by Rosemary Rogers. I feel like I had this at some point and got rid of it. I never read it. Um, but this one is an exotic flower from a faraway land. Uh, Celia came to London to become a proper English rose. And then she meets a rogue American. That one's pretty step back. We have Sweet Savage Love by Rosemary Rogers. This one is pretty vintage, and it is um, American historical, uh, kind of bounces around all over the place. Uh, Paris to New Orleans to Mexico, tale of unending passion never to be forgotten. Virginia's love for Stephen. I don't know about those character names. Stephen with a V. <laughs> This one I'll go ahead and include, even though it could go in the in the various, I'll just go ahead and say it's romance, even though it's, we'll just say it's it's classic fiction, but uh, Sanditon, is that how you say it, Jane Austen, I just got it because it's the nice vintage looking cover, um, never read Jane Austen, I've never really had a want to, but that may change. Uh, then we have The Millionaire's Daughter by Dorothy Eden with the, if you can see, gold. And this one is uh, Unforgettable 19th Century Love Story of a Beautiful Heiress Caught Up in the Cross Currents of Ambition and Desire. Can you tell that this one is a worm on hot ashes? <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. She's going to be in, in the business in future videos. And we have Under Southern Stars by Patricia Goldie. Yes, this one does not have a step back, um, but it is 
from the Scottish Highlands to London's infamous Newgate Prison, from the Hasties to the tragedies and triumphs of the colony at Botany Bay, a uh, rich, passionate, and unforgettable saga of Lucy and Faith Gamble, English twins. And I guess they're husbands that they find, because you know there's always husbands. Um, that one. And then we have Outback by Joy Chambers. Apparently Joy Chambers um, is not known to us. She was in a really popular TV show back in the day called Neighbors. Uh, one of the top 10 TV shows in England and Australia who she also happened to write books. Um, the name implies Outback from America to Sydney. Um, and of course, you know, this step back is on the back. And I like this because apparently it had some, some old airline tickets, passes, boarding passes. Well, that was neat. Then we have White Tigress by Jade Lee. I never read any Jade Lee, but I remember seeing her books quite often at the used bookstore when I was in high school. And, um, I mean, I, it's right up my alley, so I don't know why I ever picked her up other than, I have no idea. Maybe it was just perfect timing like I was waiting. Because I don't think at that time I was more into um, like everything set in any Asian country. I'm like, okay, I'm all about it. I don't think I was at that time. So quite possibly could be it. I could, because I know I would pick her sh books off the shelves and read it and be like, mm. Then we have Annie Song by Katherine Anderson. Um, apparently this one is a Western and it kind of makes me sad because it's that no one wants um, to have anything to do with Annie because she's an, they call her idiot girl because she has some sort of unknown affliction. I'm not sure what, um, but she does find someone to love her for her and it takes place in Oregon, 1890. So that one. This may be three videos. I may do Family Saga separate and then the rest. Uh, then we have Beast by Judith Ivory. This one is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Here is the back that could be a step back. And it is uh, an American heiress and a um, European, let's see. I'm wanting to say British aristocracy scarred by childhood illness. And I, I don't know why. Like this one is so loved. Like it's so, not floppy, but it's just, it's how I like them. I am the world's worst at, if it's brand new, when I buy it brand new, it has to stay pristine. And I get really upset if I crinkle it or, or tear it or anything happens to it. But I gravitate I prefer a used book I want somebody else to have beaten it up and have you know had it to be loved and creased so that I can just is that weird I don't know if that's weird um we have ever my love by Gretchen Craig this one is I uh, believe a western no uh this one is civil war uh, Marion Johnston joins the Underground Railroad, living a dangerous double life. That one does not look like a historical romance to me. It looks like it's one of those Christian romances about a bakery or a cottage. <laughs> then we have three more in this category, and then I will stop this and go on to the next video. So it's not going to yell at me. We have Flor de Lis by Dorothy E. Taylor. Um, this one is after the uh, French Revolution. Uh, an American saves a French woman and brings her back to uh, South Carolina at the turn of the century. Well, turn of the 19th century. You get that. Um, and it's really short. It would be easy to, to read in a couple of hours. And then we have My Lady Vixen by Connie Mason. I have more Connie Masons. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This one is um, pirate, privateering ship, 
Pirate Romance. So if you like those. And the last one is uh, Wild Yearning by Penelope Williamson. I feel like I had this at some point a long time ago. Perhaps. It is um, Boston to the Maine Wilderness. After, let's see when it is. 1721. So we'll say pre-Revolutionary War. And it has a step back. So that's, that's that. Um, I will go ahead and post this while I am filming my second video. And I will get the family's caucus out of the way. But I will see you soon. Bye.